Hi, and welcome back to the Java Web App Tutorial. In this video, we're going to take a look at how we can deploy our Spring Boot application on AWS using Elastic Beanstalk. In the tutorial so far, we've built a Spring Boot and Vaughn application complete with a database, and we now want to make that uh, application available to our users by deploying it to the cloud. If you haven't followed along with the series, uh, this same tutorial will work just as well for any other Spring Boot application, so please join us. Now, the first thing that we want to do is define how our application should work in production. So up until now, we've been using a in-memory database, which is really handy when we're working locally, we're developing the application, but having a non-persistent database is not what we want to do in real life. So the first thing that we need to do is define another properties file where we can configure the database that we want to use uh, for production and also some other production related uh, properties. So in the main resources folder here, go ahead and create a new properties file called application-prod.properties. The prod here refers to the profile uh, that we use when we start the application. And that's something that we're gonna configure in AWS so that these uh, specific uh, properties get picked up when we start the application. And in here, we're gonna configure a couple of things. First of all, the server port. So far we've been using 8080, which is the default port. But for AWS, we need to map our application to 5000 for it to get uh, served. The other thing that we need to uh, configure here is our production database. So we're gonna set up a MySQL database in AWS. And when we do that, it will uh, make all the configuration available to us as environment variables. So we're gonna have environment variables like host name, port, and database name available to us. And using those, we'll uh, configure the data source URL, username and password, and use those to connect to the database. One thing to note here is that I'm using the uh, automatic creation of uh, tables. This means that uh, your database tables will get recreated every time that you start an application. So obviously this would not be ideal for a production setup. Instead, uh, you probably want to look into a database migration tool like Liquibase or something like that. There's a link to that in the text version of this tutorial that you can find in the, in the show notes below. Okay, so now we have the configuration for our production. And as you can see, we're using MySQL here. Uh, in order for that to work, we need to add a dependency for it in our POM file so that uh, when the application starts up, it can actually use that. So we already have our H2 database here from before, and we're gonna add a, another dependency here for MySQL, for the MySQL connector Java specifically, and define that the scope should be runtime for it. So with this in place, now that our application gets started up with the production profile active, it will try to connect to MySQL and it will be able to find the connector here because we've loaded it. Okay, so now that we've configured the production database and port, let's go ahead and build a production build of the application. Here, I'll use the command line, but again, you can use the, uh, the sidebar here to run the same Maven targets. So what I want to run is Maven clean package and use the profile production like so. I'm also gonna skip the test that we wrote in the previous video just uh, to make this a little bit faster. Now what happens when we build a production version of a Vaughn application is that it will create a production optimized bundle of all the front end resources. It will minify the JavaScript and just kind of eliminate everything that we don't need. And that will make our app load faster for our end users. Now that this is uh, completed, you'll find the actual jar file here uh, under the target uh, folder. So that's something that we'll need in just a moment. So we now have our application ready to go, uh, ready for production. And the only thing we need to do is go to AWS and set up our environment. So what I'll show you here 
is using the free tier of AWS. So you can uh, sign up for AWS. There's a link to that in the text version of the tutorial again. And once you've signed up and go to Elastic Beanstalk, you'll find that under the services and Elastic Beanstalk here. And once you're here, go ahead and click get started. We're going to give our name, uh, application name Vaadin CRM like this. The platform that we're using, that we've been using throughout the entire series here is Credo 11, which is Java 11. We'll start with the sample application code, so we're not going to upload our application quite yet, but we're going to go into the configuration here to configure some more options. The first thing that we're going to do is go into software and add an environment variable. We're going to add spring profiles active and give it the value of prod. So by passing in prod here for the active profile, we're going to make sure that spring loads this uh, prod uh, properties file and uses our production uh, data source and everything. The other thing that we need for this to actually work is a database. And I'm going to uh, create the database through Elastic Beanstalk. Now this is not recommended as they, they say here uh, for a like real life production uh, setup because whenever you actually go and delete this application, it would delete the database itself. So uh, what you can do in that case is create the database completely separate of this application and connect it the same way. But in order to make things easier for us now and to speed up things, we're just gonna use the database setup that's uh, built in here. You need to provide a username and a password. It's good for you to remember these, of course, but uh, uh, Elastic Beanstalk will provide those to our application as environment variables, so you don't need to uh, pass them in here in the properties file. And that's a best practice, so never, never expose your passwords or anything in these properties files that you end up uh, committing to Git or kind of making visible to the world. So keep passwords and stuff uh, secure by putting them into environment uh, files or environment variables. Uh, for attention, we can choose delete. In this case, we're working with a demo application. So whenever we delete the application, we can delete the database as well. And then we'll click save. We've configured everything that we need for now. So we can go ahead and click create app. Now, this will take quite a while. This has taken me anywhere from like 10 to 15 minutes. So now is a good time to go and grab a cup of coffee, a beer, uh, go out for a quick run or something and come back here once we're done. All right, welcome back. So it's been about 12 minutes since we uh, ramped up the application and it's now up and running. We can see the health status is okay and we are ready to upload our application. So click on the upload and deploy button, choose file and select the jar file that we just built. Again, this will take a little while after we click deploy. So first it's gonna upload the jar file and once it's uh, uploaded, it's gonna deploy it. So this will take probably anywhere from a minute to several minutes. All right, now that the jar file is uploaded. It's going to take a while for Elastic Beanstalk to actually deploy it. You'll see the health go gray and it might flash uh, orange for a while, but it should uh, turn green after a little while, a couple of minutes. All right, and when you see that the environment has been uh, updated successfully, you should be able to click on the URL and view the application online. And there we go. All right, so that's it for this video. We built a production version of our Spring Boot application. We set up a Elastic Beanstalk environment and we deployed our application to the cloud. So you can now share the URL with your friends or customers or whoever and let them check it out. Again, I wanna remind you that there is a text version of this tutorial. There's a link to that in the show notes below. Please let us know if you have any ideas for other videos or tutorials that you'd like us to cover, and you can do that in the comments below or on Twitter. So thanks for watching and goodbye.